Howdy lads, you know what's cool? Bugs. But you know what's cooler? Violence. So today, I thought I'd combine the two and talk to you about how bugs fight each other. I don't want to talk about one-on-one -on -one matchups though, I want to talk about what happens when bugs go to full-blown war in the wild. As it turns out, bugs are metal as hell with their war tactics. For example, the slave-making ant. These ants are known for their brighter orange coloration, and as the name suggests, they essentially take other ants and force them to be their slaves. They do this by sending out scouts to look at nearby ant colonies, and when a scout finds a suitable nest, they report back to their colony and begin a raid. During the raid, the slave-making ants rush into the nest and grab as many larvae as possible before returning to their own nest, hopefully without dying in the process. Once home, they imprint on the larvae by making them smell a bunch of their musky stink. At this point, the captured members fully think they're part of the slave maker colony, and will work as a member until the day they die. Some captured workers will even participate in raids against their original colony. Imagine how that must go. Oh hey Steven, long time no see! Target acquired! Go, go, go! But maybe the craziest part is that sometimes the enslaved ants will just realize they've been enslaved, causing them to go on a rampage and kill as many slave-making offspring as they can. These slave-making ants have become such a problem in the ant world, one species known as the Formica archboldi has come up with a unique and possibly even less ethical solution. In order to scare away slave-making scouts, they find a trapjaw ant, which are like bigger, scarier ants, murder it, bring its corpse back to their nest before dismembering it and leaving its body parts out to make the scout think they found a trap jaw nest, which they are way too scared to investigate. Personally, I don't think the scout is fooled by this at all. I think it just realizes it found a den of psychos and wants nothing to do with it. What the fuck? Anyways, that's enough of those guys. Now let's talk about termite warfare. Termites and ants do not get along at all on account of competing for the same resources like food or nesting sites. And as a result, they often get in conflicts that result in full-on ant raids on termite mounds. More specifically, these raids are usually conducted by driver ants, which have wider mandibles and are much more aggressive than most ants. During these raids, the goal of the ants is just to annihilate the mound and steal as many resources as possible. This can be done either by killing the queen or inflicting so many casualties the colony can no longer function. The tactics used in these raids are surprisingly advanced. It's not just a bunch of ants running at the structure in a line like I think one would expect of such a simple creature. In reality, these assaults are often quite coordinated, with ants swarming in from all sides to surround their enemy. Soldier ants, which are bigger and stronger, will often lead these charges, with smaller worker ants following close behind. They'll even take down thin walls in order to create new angles to attack from. However, termites have strategies of their own, most of which are enacted before the raid even starts. One of the main ways they defend themselves is in how they actually construct their mounds. They build elaborate mounds with branching and confusing paths that make it difficult for attackers to figure out where they are. The termites' tunnels even include fake passageways that lead to dead ends to further slow invaders. The tunnels are quite small, so they place large soldier termites in the entrance to force out attackers and alert the colony of any invasion. If there's an invasion, the soldiers can slap their heads on the ground, creating a vibration that alerts any nearby termites of an attack, allowing the colony to enter its defense mode, and all soldiers rush to the entrances to fight the invasion, while builder squads begin looking for parts of the mound to repair. Remember how I said ants will break down thin walls to create new entrances? Well, these guys are waiting on the other side to build it right back up again. Sometimes they even construct barriers behind invaders to trap them inside. This can be done when an ant has wandered into a dead end, at which point they remember they're supposed to be stupid, so they can't figure out how to dig out and will often suffocate inside. During the actual battle, some termite species will also produce either sticky or poisonous chemicals to spray at attackers that could either trap or kill invading ants. But now I'm sure you're wondering, well, who usually wins? And I'm getting to that. It hasn't even been five minutes. Oh my god. Whatever. On average, the driver ants have a little bit of an advantage over termites and will more often than not be able to take victory. However, these two species have been in an evolutionary arms race for centuries, so it's not too hard to imagine a future where a few hundred years from now, termites have evolved to have a significant advantage over the ants. Maybe they'll get stronger walls or just grow larger and smarter. Or if they decide they want to be cool, they'll get telekinesis or guns. Or maybe the ants will just keep winning and the termites will start to decline in population. We really have no way to know. One last tidbit of information before before you go, some ants employ kamikaze tactics to defend their bases. Yeah, they're called Malaysian exploding ants, and when something's attacking their colony, they just send out a bunch of kamikaze ants that blow up into a sticky, toxic secretion to stop anything invading. Shockingly, this strategy doesn't seem to have caught on in the ant community, but it's never too late to start a trend. Anyways, those are some unethical war tactics employed by bugs, and I think that's pretty neat. Thanks for watching, I'll see you lads next time.